Do you have tax questions about selling your primary residence? How much money are you going to owe? We are here today with tax professional Nikolai Luth with Simplified Tax and Lansing to answer all of those questions. So when you're selling your primary residence, how much in tax savings should people expect? Almost always I get people answer they don't want to hear. This is one of the few times where I usually give good news because as long as you've lived in your primary residence for two of the last five years, then you can exclude up to $250,000 in gain as a single person or $500,000 in gain. So wait, 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 wait. Let's say that I moved out three years ago and I've been renting it for two years. You're saying because I still lived in it two of the last five years, I'm gonna qualify for that exemption. That's correct. So the, the appreciation portion would be non-taxable. No, yes. that's not really mind blowing. I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, it almost, it, 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 this question is all the time, right? So, and, and the key is it's the gain portion. So, yes. you, you know, $250,000 a single person, $500,000 as a married couple in gain above your purchase So price. the gain is you you bought it for $150,000, you are now selling it for $350,000. No taxation whatsoever. Okay. Yep. And um, so I guess I don't need to worry about any other deductible costs if I've lived in the house because most likely in Lansing, Michigan, you're not going to have a gain. I mean, not to hate on you, you could. <laughs> That's right. You could. I, very rare uh, you end up exceeding that two hundred fifty or five hundred thousand. But you're right. So normally, anytime you have a property, you want to track all your costs. You put a deck on. You did. You know. You put a new water heater, and those those things will increase the basis. Your costs plus improvements. Honestly, as long as you live there for two years, then it won't matter. Now you never know. You may get a job offer, and you have to leave early. So you know, no harm in still tracking the cost. I, I have a question about yeah. that. This is a real question that I really don't know the answer to this I've time. I've lived here for a year and 10 months. And I got a job transfer more than, I think it was 50 or 60 miles. We had a client last year do this research and they said that you could, if it was a job transfer out of the area, there was some way to prorate it. There is a proration for very specific rules okay. on job change. Distance matters. So, Distance yes. matters. So if you are in that situation, you're going to want to call Nikolai. His contact info is down below. Yep. Is there a difference in how you're taxed if your home is owned in a trust? No difference. So it's assuming that it's a grand tour style living trust, yes. which is normally what we see, right? So I'm doing this for estate planning purposes mm -hmm. only, just to make sure that upon my death, things transfer mm -hmm. the right way. Yes. No difference. It, that, right. that, that trust is considered a see-through, so you are still officially the owner from a tax perspective. Uh, okay. So no difference whatsoever that, if it's in a trust. So when we, I've had a closing that this has happened at the title company, the, the closer still had them fill out like the tax information on the other because they're like, well, it's owned by an entity. So it sounds like you got a closer that didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was going to say yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, it's still, you know, it's going to be check the box that I've lived here for at least two of the last five years. Yeah. So yeah. My primary residence, yeah. okay. even if it's a trust, shouldn't matter because that trust doesn't have a tax ID number anyways. It shouldn't right. if it's a grantor style trust. So okay. um, normally, there'd be no additional paperwork if the property was owned in a trust upon sale. Right? Good. Um, other things that come up with frequency, um, as far as income taxes go, can I deduct my property taxes and my mortgage interest? Both are deductible items. However, I see yeah, your so, so, coming. So unfortunately, so back in 2018, they passed a new tax law, mm -hmm. which limited uh, the amount of state taxes you can deduct. So as a, it actually doesn't matter if you're single or married, you get $10,000 of total tax deduction each year. That's a combination of your state income tax, your personal property tax, like your registrations, and then your real estate taxes. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's deductible. But if your total of those exceeds $10,000, then you may not get any value from it. So if you live in East Lansing, bad news. Yes. And then the other piece to this is that the standard deduction is way larger than it used to be. So it used to be, as a married couple, $12,000. Now it's like $26,000. So unless your property taxes plus mortgage interest plus charity, those are the big three, unless they're more than 26,000 as a married couple, you can deduct it, but you get no value from it. Mm -hmm. And so really okay. we saw, you know, it used to be 50% of Americans itemized prior to 2018, now it's 10%. And so only 10% of Americans are getting okay. value from those deductions, although they are deductible. Okay, Got interesting. It. They, they made it more confusing for us. Of but course. what I'm hearing is 90% of y'all don't need to worry about it. Unfortunately. Yep. Uh, oh, um, 
If someone is moving to a new municipality that has city taxes, what would you be your recommendation for saving for those income taxes? Good question. So, you know, if you're living in a city that has an income tax, then 1% of your total income uh, goes to city taxes, whether you work in that city or not. So if you live in the city, you pay 1% no matter what. So honestly, if you move into, let's use Lansing, city of Lansing, proper city of Lansing as an example, you move into city of Lansing from Holt, then you'll start to pay 1% of your income to the city of Lansing from that date you move in. So the first year you get to do a, a part year, yeah, a mm -hmm. part year residency return that shows I lived in Lansing from July 1st, which would be convenient, through the end of the year. Then half of your income will be taxed in the city. You pay 1% of that to the city. So if your employer doesn't collect city tax for you, then you'll need to make estimated payments to the city to avoid penalties and interest because okay. they don't wait to the end of the year. That's interesting because I always thought it was a half a percent to live and a half a percent to work, but you're yeah. saying it's a it's percent. A percent. Um, but if I live in East Lansing, work in Lansing, then it's a half and a half. It's a half and a half because the city you live in will give yes. you a credit for what you pay to that other city. Uh -huh. But if you live, if yeah. you work in Holt, live in Lansing, you're paying 1% of Lansing yeah. no matter what. And can you let us know what are the, where are the areas that are charging the income tax? Yeah. So the most popular one, city of Lansing does, um, East Lansing, city of East Lansing started about three years ago. Uh, Ionia, oh, yes, <laughs> Ionia, <laughs> Portland, those are the main ones oh, around here. Really? So, okay. yeah, the city of Portland, not the township, but the city of Portland and the city of Ionia, those are the main ones we see. Okay. Flint, Grand Rapids, and those two. are a percent as well. They are, yeah. So, Grand Rapids is a little bit more, I think they're one and a quarter percent, but all the rest I just mentioned are one percent. Okay, good to know. If you have additional questions that are just burning about real estate taxes, follow the link below and you can ask Nikolai and his team any question you wish. About taxes. About taxes. <laughs>